So, Michael, why did you put this artificial intelligence in there in the first place? Well, first, uh, who's Higgs? Did you catch, like, I do. Well, I, I got, you know, Peter Higgs. He's the guy who's so science background. Uh, Peter Higgs is the person who kind of put on the map an explanation for why everything has mass in the universe. Uh, brief insight into the way physicists think uh, is that symmetry underlies the way physicists think about things. And you think, why is symmetry important? Well, you've probably heard of the law of conservation of mass. Ultimately, or it's law of conservation of energy, mass energy, if you will. But the reason why we have that conservation law is because there's a symmetry in the universe. Talk about conservation of momentum. There's a symmetry in the universe, and that's what leads to these conservation laws. So you may not have recognized the importance of symmetry, but symmetry is really important. So as scientists are thinking about how do we have gravity and electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force, there's this thought that maybe those all ought to work together. And so as they work to do that, what has to happen in order to have these forces that look very different is this original symmetry has to be broken. And so, believe it or not, we look at electromagnetism, and that's why charges move and interact with one another, and the weak nuclear force, which is why particles decay. Scientists have recognized there's a fundamental symmetry between those two, and the reason it looks different is because that symmetry is broken. And so that's a long explanation of how Peter Higgs recognized that you can explain why certain particles have mass, certain particles don't have mass, because they're all supposed to not have mass. But when the symmetries get broken, if there's this Higgs field in the universe, different particles interact with that Higgs field and acquire mass. And so that's why we have mass. And so. Uh, Recently, within the last five years, uh, was awarded a Nobel Prize for the discovery of the Higgs boson at the CERN Collider. So his, his work in the theoretical side of developing the, the theoretical framework for doing that was recognized with the Nobel Prize. And so, uh, you know, very, one of those very popular people, if you will. But So not only scientifically well accomplished, but also fairly well known in the popular community, whether they understand his scientific accomplishments or not. So what he said. <laughs> but that actually, that was exactly what I, I, I wanted to know because that's why you're here because you understand that stuff and that's why I gave you the script in the first place that, that would register with you. Mm -hmm. But that's one of those little nuggets in screenwriting that most people are, most people are not going to have any idea who Higgs is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you go to a movie and it's science fiction and, and there's those little nuggets just for you. <laughs> um, but the reason I pick that name for the... Uh, the artificial intelligence in this script is, well, sure, because I was doing research and came across that he had won the Nobel Prize around five years ago, right when I was starting yeah. to write this script. Uh, and I was, my main character is a super genius type. And so the way I have scripted out this artificial intelligence, this advanced, you know, the the cutting edge of, of processing and, and technology is that the algorithms or whatever the terminology is that, that uh, are at the heart of this software are geared toward the unique user. They're, they're uh, adapted for the individual because we are all different. Like obviously humans all have more things in common than we have different, but we all have our individual nuances. Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the kind of, one of the lines that's in the script is that the computer knows him better than he knows himself, right? Or that that you know that's in the in the manual. Mm -hmm. Like he, you know he's he's reading <laughs> it. It's like oh, apparently this thing knows you better than you know yourself. And that line is repeated later on. So, and, so Higgs has been designed and trained to know the main character. Em is his name. I, I, so, so that's so that's not just an accident that he knows him. It's intentional. It's intentional okay. because this guy is on this mission. It's a, you know, there's a very narrow margin of error in this mission. He's going to this distant rock that nobody's ever been this far before. Mm -hmm. And so everything has to be extremely efficient. So there's variables that have to be accounted for. And that's the, why there's this artificial intelligence that needs to monitor him. Uh, 
partly from deep space isolation, you know, going that far for that long, being out there alone, there's psychological ramifications that they want to take into account. So this artificial intelligence is is designed mm -hmm. to maximize the efficiency of the mission by essentially comforting uh, he, it, it's it's a knowledge base. It, well, it's, it, it's almost like a companion. He's almost like a companion, exactly. in a very real sense. Well, that that's the thing. There, that's a one of the features of it, right? Like, it's, I keep bringing up the phone. The, your phone is is a phone, but it's also a camera, and it's also a you know a search processor. Mm -hmm. right? You know, the, the device has multiple functions. So, the artificial intelligence is an information source. But it's also a soothing, comforting companion, simulated companionship mm -hmm. is how it's referred right. to. Uh, emulated intelligence is another way it's referred to. And the reason I picked the name Higgs is because I, I made the main character this, this he, he started as a child genius and at a young age, you know, he got interested in physics. He has, you know, uh, you put these emotional, you know, uh, you create your character with certain real emotional human or human emotions like his father died of cancer, which is a, uh, you know, caused him to be bitter toward the world. But he discovered science and poured himself into that. And that's what got him focused. And he became a genius. And his first like successful paper when he was 12 years old was a, you know, about Peter Higgs. OK. Right? And that's what sets us in the future. Right. This is a contemporary. He's still alive. He just won the Nobel Prize. And so, you know, we're not that far in the future. It'd be like doing a paper on Einstein for us today or right. something like that. And so that's why this I, I picked the name Higgs. Um, and uh, it's, it's interesting hearing your description because I didn't get that reading through there. So it's, it's neat to hear the backstory, if you will. I when you it. do screenwriting, and yeah. that's the thing, you've got to know your character better than the audience is going to know the character. Right, that makes sense. Because all of his decisions, even though you don't know all the backstory, all of his decisions come from who he is. Right, so you have to become your character, and if you and you, so you have to know him, and and sometimes you have details that you've come up with that accidentally come forward in the writing later on, and that yeah. that's the best screenwriting. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest screenwriter, but I've got lots of compliments on this script. Mm -hmm. We should get it made. <laughs>